What's up everybody? My name is Mike at Filmboy24. This is officially round two for me and my channel at trying to sync up some audio, double system, to some Super 8 film that I shot with this non-crystal sync camera. How'd it turn out? I'll show you. Before I get started, I want to say I hope genuinely everyone had a safe and happy 4th of July. Now, this is round two of my attempts at double system sound with non-sync Super 8 cameras. If you didn't see my first shot at it, I'll post a link somewhere on the screen uh, and take a look at it. I think this one may have come out a little bit better, and I'm going to show you exactly what I did to get to that point. It's not as hard as you might think. It is a little bit tedious. You have to really dig and watch and listen, and you have to watch the mouth versus the spikes in the audio. I'm going to show you exactly what I did to achieve my sync sound probably right after I show you the film. So what did I use in my tests? I used one of my favorite brand cameras. This is a Shinon. This particular one is a Shinon Pacific 200-8XL camera. It's a sound camera. It is capable of holding the now defunct 200-foot magazines in here, right here. The top flips open. It's a good little camera. I have a uh, makeshift. I made my own little light seal for it in here. I don't know if you can see that or not, but it's just a piece of foam. Kind of keeps the light out of there. So I'm using this. Why am I using this? Well, I love Shinon cameras and I love them for their reliability. They're not the best cameras in the world, probably as it relates to picture quality and overall performance but I like the reliability I've had for well, 35 years. I, my first camera was a Shinon back in the, uh, in the 80s, and I've had them ever since. Uh, this is a non-crystal sync camera, which means that the drive motor in this camera is not precisely controlled to maintain its speed, plus or minus 0.00000000001. Uh, rather, it it's just uh, keeps a modest 24 frames per second, or whatever the film speed you select, uh, and it's going to vary depending on the voltage fed to the motor uh, and other all kinds of sorts of mechanical and electrical reasonings. Anyway, so it may shoot 23 and a half frames a second, it might shoot 24 and a half frames per second, or anywhere in between. So how do you sync up audio that is super, super precise in the now digital world? I'm gonna show you in a second, but the film that I used was this, it's an older roll of Kodak Vision 3 500T. Now I decided to use this film because I'm shooting it here inside my little makeshift studio, and it probably is the best for the lower light conditions. It's an older role, and what I mean by that, and you'll hear that again in a second in my film, but the copyright date on the box is 2015. Now, it's a 50th anniversary box from Kodak. Now, I think I got this secondhand. So my guess is that this is somewhere around 2015. 2015 was 60 years since the, sort of the formation of the Super 8 format. So five, six years old, somewhere in that range. I don't know how it was stored. Uh, keep that in mind when you see the results. The camera isn't the sharpest in the world. The development, now I did go with a C41 process on this ECN2 film. I'm just about done with ECN2. I like the look of it. I just don't have any luck storing the chemicals. They last me sometimes less than a week. I get one or two rolls out of it and I'm not happy with that. C41, you get a bit of color shift, you get a little bit of change. The negatives are much more dense, which I like. And the storage life on the mixed chemicals is so much deeper and longer than that of the ECN2 chemicals. So I did process in C41. 
I didn't overly clean the film. There's a couple little water spots here and there that you'll see. Again, this was my attempt to try and sync the audio with the film. Now, much many of you may or may not know, but I record all of my audio in a little task cam, and you'll see that in a minute. That's exactly what I used while filming with my shin on. So, double system, I recorded the audio separate from the film. There is no sound stripe on this film, like the old uh, variation of sound film where the cartridge came down a little lower because 18 frames away from the picture you had a sound head inside your camera that recorded on a magnetic stripe. Those days are long gone. You don't do that anymore. Now, if you're going to do it, it has to be double system. So, before I get into exactly how I synced up the audio with the film, let me go ahead and show you my final result. Then we'll talk about how to do it. Here it is. Marked it. So, we're back at it. Now, I have my Tascam uh, uh, DR05X here recording into my little cheapo microphone. And like I explained a minute ago, I am using some older but newer Vision 3 500T7219 film. And I say older because I don't remember when I got it, and I think I got it secondhand. But it is Kodak's uh, newest Vision stock. It's just a couple of years old. Hopefully we get some good results out of it. I wanted to do this test again simply because my first go around, I used... Uh, my editing software, I have upgraded my editing software since then, and I've also learned that you really don't want to alter the audio as much as you want to alter the film or video image. Now, I'm shooting this at 24 frames per second, which will give me around 220, maybe two and a half minutes. I do have a little timer here that I had set for, you like that? for two minutes and 15 seconds, at which time I'm gonna tail slate so I can better try to sync up the audio. Um, I don't know how well this camera is going to perform. I am shooting it with two lights right here and I have an overhead light as well. Um, they're just 100 watt LEDs. I don't know how well they react to film. I don't think they do too well. They flicker a bit, uh, but we're gonna find out together um, I don't know how I'm going to process this film yet. Well, by now I do, because you're watching it. Not sure if I'm going to do C41 or ECN2. Been having some really bad luck with ECN2 lately. I use the Cine Simplified uh, two-bath process. My timer says I got about 15 seconds left. I do have my camera. I have my camera on a remote here. So I am going to tail slate right now. You'll hear my timer in three, two, one. Just so we have it. Now I'm gonna just let the camera run out and tell you guys that I really appreciate everyone. Oh, sorry. I don't think that was terrible. In fact, I think it came out pretty darn good. Now, how did that happen? Well, let me start by saying I used Sony Vegas Pro 18 as my editing software. That's all I used. And when I dropped the scanned film, 24 frames a second, when I dropped the scanned piece of film into my editing software, and then I dropped the audio beneath it, I will say this. When I lined up the front slate with the spike in the audio, and then I fast forward it over to the back and the tail slates, the tail slate and the tail spike in the audio. It was almost six seconds off. So I knew I had a lot of work to do. So the first thing I did was grab the end of my film. And on my particular nonlinear editing program, you have to hold control while you hold the end of your clip and you drag. And what that does is it, it stretches your film. It doesn't duplicate it or shorten it or extend it. It actually stretches it. So you're not losing any footage whatsoever, but you're either slowing it down or speeding it up. So while I held it, I stretched it until the 
moment that the tail slate touched right and matched it right to the spike in the audio. Okay, that's step one. Now we know we have everything from the front to the back lined up. So your tail clap should match and your head clap or, or slate should match. The problem is everything in between isn't going to match. I stayed in sync for about the first 10 seconds and then there's the drift, it starts. So what I did is you have to look for pauses in voice or as you saw when I set my timer down, any kind of a spike anywhere and you watch the mouth. So when, kind of like when my big fat mouth opens to speak, you look for the start of that audio in a visual form and you want to split right where the mouth opens, you split it, control, stretch or contract one side or the other, and then holding control again, you want to stretch till the mouth, when it's starting to open, matches when the voice is starting to show up in your audio. Then you want to grab the other end and bring it back, and you want to stretch it the proper way. I'm telling you, if you don't, if you don't hold control or whatever it is your, your software uh, requires, you're going to actually add to the video or take away from the video and then you're going to have jumps all over. So you want to increase or decrease the speed of your film, not cut or reduce the overall length of it. So once you've done that and you play, you're going to see in most cases that now everything to that point stays pretty well in sync and everything after that point will stay at that split point, will stay in sync for a little bit and then it's gonna drift again. And you have to do the same thing. You have to find a good spot where it starts to drift, split your film, expand, contract the speed, not the film, and line it up with a mouth or some other visual aid to the spikes in the audio. Now, my little visual here shows that I did that a total of three splits or four clips. Now, I will say that my final edit did end up having five different uh, clips, which was a total of four individual cuts and then stretches back and forth. Once you have that done, lock everything in. I played it two or three times, had to tweak it a little bit, a frame or two back and forth here and there, and that was it. It took me, honestly, less than an hour I know it sounds like a long time for two and a half minutes of film, but when you're trying to do what really isn't meant to be done, that's a good trade-off as far as I'm concerned. Now I will say this, and this is just in terms of any color correction or, or resizing or framing or anything like that, you probably want to do that first. And this way you don't have to do it to each and every single clip individually. And I know you can copy the properties of one and paste the properties to another and another and another, but it's sometimes a little bit easier, especially if your footage is all the same, like Blabbermouth here in the same setting, same lighting, same everything. Go ahead and do it to the entire, you know, unaltered clip first and then start chopping it up. And I, you can see I kind of was messing with it in between in my visuals there. Uh, so I didn't do it all at once and I probably should have. So that's it. That's all I did to sync or double system sync my audio to that film. And again, I think the uh, final result was quite nice. I know the film look isn't perfect. Um, probably going to stick with C41 with my film uh, in the future was much easier for me and I like easy. If you enjoy stuff like this or if you have any questions for me, please let me know down in the comment section. As most of you know, I try to answer every single comment that ever comes in. Not always possible. It's getting a little bit busier over here at the uh, Film Boy 24 area, but I do my very best to answer every single comment that comes up. Uh, and do me one last favor. You know what that means. Punch that like button. Just don't break your screen. Consider subscribing. I'd love to have you here. Part of the Film Boy family. We have a lot of fun here. We shoot a lot of film. Still film. Movie film. Mostly movie film. 
And until the very next time I see every single one of you beautiful people, I'll see you all in the next go around.